Up until now, we've been talking about past tense as if it were a single entity. We've been talking about if it ends with an E, it was done by me. And we've talked about car, gar, czar verbs and train wreck verbs. Unfortunately, there are two types of past tense, which sort of makes sense. There are two verbs for to be, ser and a star. They both mean to be. They're very different. There are two words for to know, saber, conocer. Both very different. There are two words for you. There's to, you friend, and there's usted, you sir. So, <coughs> so there are two types of past tense. Now, the one we've been using has been called preterite. It ended in one letter. Like if it ends with an E, it was done by me. If it ends in an O, it was done by Joe. You use the preterite for something that happened one time. I slipped and fell and broke my leg. I met the president. I got bit by a dog. Uh, my brother threw a rock at me and it hit me in the back of the head. All of those are one-time actions and they would be preterite. There's a second grammar pattern called imperfect. Okay, when do we use the imperfect? Okay, in real general terms, past tense is imperfect. If you're not sure whether to use preterite or imperfect, use imperfect. It's your default. It's your control alt delete. Anytime you're describing anything in the past, it's imperfect. If you're talking about the date, it was the 5th of May. Time, it was 4 o'clock. Weather, it was hot. Feelings are imperfect. Traits, qualities, characteristics. Um, family, he was my brother. Your job, to show ownership, it was Bob's car. Um, age, she was 15 years old. All of these are imperfect. How do I form the endings? We'll talk about that in just a second. Right now, I really want you to get your heads wrapped around the concept that there are two types of past tense. Uh, if, there's, if it happened one time, like um, I spoke to the senator, it ends in one letter, but, and it's called preterite. But if you're describing anything, it's imperfect. Also, anytime it's ing in the past, it's this new grammar pattern we're about to learn called imperfect. She was eating. That's imperfect. We were talking. Imperfect. They were sleeping. Oh, I get it, Mr. Hall. If you're describing anything, you use this imperfect grammar pattern. Yes. Anytime it's ing or ongoing in the past, it's imperfect. And any time it was repeated. Example, if the president stands up and says, I lied to the American people. In English, you don't know if he lied once or over and over and over. If he says in Spanish, I lied to the American people, and he uses the preterite, it means I lied one time. But if he uses the imperfect, this new grammar pattern, it means I lied over and over or repeatedly. So if your girlfriend or boyfriend says to you, I deceived you, if they use the preterite, they deceived you one time. That's the, if it ends with an E, it was done by me. If it ends in an O, it was done by Joe. But if they use this new grammar pattern, imperfect, and say, I deceived you, it means they did it over and over and over. So, when do you use this new imperfect grammar pattern? Describing anything, date, time, weather, appearance, all of those are imperfect, right? Ongoing actions, anytime it's past tense ing. We were sleeping, they were running, he was eating. It's imperfect. And anytime something happened over and over and over, Mr. Holt always told stupid jokes, that would be imperfect. Mr. Holt always wore silly ties, or repeatedly wore silly ties. Now, when do you use the preterite? That if it ends with an E, it was done by me. If it ends in an O, it was done by Joe. Two times. One, an action that happened one time. Yesterday he ate a taco for lunch, once. On Saturday I went to the store, one time. Or you also use the preterite to describe an action that had a known starting and stopping time. Like, they lived here for 15 years. She stayed in her room for several minutes. But again, if you're not sure, guess imperfect. Your default is imperfect past.